Jung cruising slowly down the pit lane. OK, so Jung obviously didn't make the grid at all. He will start after the rest of the cars have passed uh, the line, and he is indeed in the spare car. So he was 21st on the grid anyway. Sorry, 22nd on the grid. He will now start effectively 21st because Bernaldi has yet to uh, have an engine that will run. The last start then for Jean Lacy, possibly the last start for Mika Hakkinen. What goes through your mind when it's your last Grand Prix start? What goes through your mind here, I don't think they'll be thinking about it, the last one, is that it's downhill on this grid, so it always needs left foot on the brake and really just to hold the car on the clutch. And then you can see very used Michelins on the front uh, as we just scanned away of uh, Montoya's Williams there. Will Montoya beat Schumacher down to the first corner? It's absolutely crucial. Otherwise, I think Michael Schumacher is going to romp away into the distance. But we have seen the Ferrari getting better of recent times away from the line. Mika Hakkinen and then he has a set procedure to go through, a number of buttons to press to activate his launch control. They both looked incredibly cool, didn't they? Schumacher and Montoya. 850 horsepower behind them, underneath their right foot. Going to release it any moment now. Any moment now. Off they go! Montoya, great start by Christy Keller on the outside, but Schumacher cuts across, as he did to Mika Hakkinen this time last year. He has the honours into turn one. Montoya leads Ralph Schumacher. The Bennett's on well placed as well as Rubens Barrichello. Holds on to fourth place, going round the outside, but Ralph Schumacher into the S's. Yes, indeed, both Benettons did fly off the line and Fisichella ahead of the two McLarens then at this time. But Michael Schumacher easily made it into Turn 1. So the first four are away, absolutely. First five, in fact, that's not true. Fisichella is up to fifth. So uh, first four away in a grid formation and Fisichella making that crucial move. That's bad news for McLaren. I think that's going to hold them up while they find a way past the Benetton. Yes, they've had many successful strategies here over the years. Look at the gap already that Michael Schumacher has. We're expecting to see those Michelin tyres on the Williams hold him up as Rubens Barrichello attacks Ralph Schumacher into the hairpin. He wants to get past. He's probably running quite light on fuel. He knows his only chance is to get in front of the, of the Williamses in the next 10 laps. I, I agree with you. I think they will surely have started Barrichello on a very light fuel load in the hope that he can springboard past the Williams somewhere. There's a chance if you get a good run out of that corner spoon and in the slipstream you can pass before 1.30R. The problem is those BMW Williams are so fast in a straight line. But Barrichello appeared to be in a slipstream position. Yes, indeed he is. We're live on board and he takes the inside line at third position. So he did, he is light surely and he did get perfectly in the slipstream. Hakkinen trying down the outside of Fisichella too, not this time around. Great move by Rubens Barrichello, he goes up to third place, Ralph Schumacher down to fourth. Meanwhile, Fisichella and Hakkinen monstering each other as well, while out the front, Michael Schumacher, look at that, 3.6 seconds on the opening lap. Explain that, Martin. Well, he's just so good when there's an uncertain level of grip on a drizzly day or on the first lap of a Grand Prix, the first lap of qualifying, Michael Schumacher has this supreme confidence and in any event, he's faster around here than anybody else at the moment. And it's a no surprise he's pulling away. We did say that, but 3.6 seconds, that's amazing. And the Williams then have certainly got to go through a period of not being particularly fast.